Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And today's guest is always a, a podcast favorite because it is an actual Land Geek student, someone who's been to boot camp twice, he's doing deals, and we get to get the inside scoop on what makes a land investor a land investor when it's not just Scott and I or you know, maybe the roundtable people. It's always good to get a fresh perspective. But before we talk to our guests, I would be remiss if I didn't properly introduce my co-host, Six Sigma, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. And this podcast is sponsored by postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Because how would you like to put out 124 ads by pressing one button? Automate it. Automate your Craigslist postings. Automate your Facebook postings. Postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? I'm well. I'm well. I'm excited for today's guest. Um, this this guy like is like, I can't wait to hear his story. I can't wait to hear his story, but I, I you know he's he's like you're gonna walk away from the from the podcast a little depressed because like you know like there's like used to be the saying in the '80s I want to be like Mike. Well, I want to be like Matt Nat Bruno, but not <laughs> I can't be like Nat Bruno for a variety of reasons which we'll get into. But Nat Bruno, how are you? Good, Mark. Mark, thank you very much for having me. So Nat, what's your bio like? Tell us your like what is your background and. Tell everybody what, what you're doing currently. Like, how do you describe you? Okay. So, honestly, it's not the best answer, but I oftentimes tell people that I'm semi-retired. And they say, what? You can't be retired at that age. I mean, I'm only 35, but I've been on the road since uh, 2014. And, uh, honestly, I was, living, I was living in Denver, operating three businesses at once, and I was super stressed out, overwhelmed, all that. And I was looking for like simplicity, honestly. I sold everything, um, possessions, my businesses, and I just took off. Took off on a three-month road trip in my pickup truck, drove from Denver all the way to San Diego, and then up Coastal Route 1 all the way to Vancouver. And that was a great trip. But when I got to, back to Denver, I was like, what do I do now? So I realized I really enjoyed the – the life on the road. So I decided to do it full time, bought a Mercedes sprinter van and converted it into a little RV built in like a, a little fold up Murphy bed, a fridge batteries to run everything and solar panels to charge the batteries. And, uh, since then I've lived in a whole bunch of different cities, LA, San Diego, Salt Lake, Portland, Seattle, San Fran, Austin. Um, and it's also enabled me to go on like an epic ski trip, ski road trip this past winter. I went to 12 different ski resorts in the U.S. and Canada and had an absolute blast. Um, but I got to say, all this wouldn't be possible if I hadn't found you, Mark, the Land Geek, and your trainings. Um, it's enabled me to, to live a real life of freedom. And I've been doing land investing for about one year now. I've done a number of cash flips, but ultimately my, the really powerful thing is building up my note portfolio. And I've been able to more than cover my monthly expenses of only 1200 bucks a month. Um, but yeah, that gets me to here. So I got to give you all the props, Mark. Thank you. No, no, it's, it, it's all you, 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 you did the work. You took the massive action and, and really the courage to live, that I guess Scott would it, would you call it an alternative lifestyle? Like how would you describe Nat's? He's like Tim Ferriss on steroids. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, like you know, it's not it's not a uh, a path for everybody, right? But he 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 is embracing the fact a, a simple fact. Okay, like you can live the way you want to. It's all about it's all about math, right? You know, like you can if your expenses are low enough and you don't need a ton of money to offset that expenses in terms of the income, you can live whatever lifestyle you want. Listen, listen to the lifestyle he's living. I mean, you know, you and I, we have kids, we have, uh, we have houses, mortgages, cars, et cetera, that we, we have to pay. Not saying that he doesn't have a car, but at the same time, he doesn't have that mortgage. He doesn't have the kids. He doesn't have that component of it. And so he, you know, his life is just this incredible adventure. 
Yeah, I mean, it, it really is. But let's, let's just rewind the tape, Nat. So number one, how did you find me? And then number two, um, what was it like when you first started doing land investing? And then how does it incorporate with your, your lifestyle from a, from a technology standpoint and a travel standpoint? And how do you make that all work? Okay. So I found you, uh, so I was living, I think it was uh, just a few blocks from Venice Beach in LA. And I was, I'll be honest, I was a bum. Didn't have, didn't have any obligations, was not uh, working at the time, just having fun, surfing every day, uh, just hanging out with friends and uh, enjoying life, like decompressing ultimately from my multiple businesses. Um, but I was listening to, I always listen to a lot of podcasts and one of them was Ari Mizell's uh, Leverage Podcast. And he's a big systems and processes uh, guy like both of us. And you came on the podcast as a guest and I said, this is it. I knew instantly. Um, basically, you fit all the criteria that I was looking for. I didn't want employees. I wanted to make a tremendous amount of money or at least the potential of a tremendous amount of money. I wanted to have passive income that came in every single month. And uh, I wanted to be able to operate it from anywhere. So uh, when those three things or four things were met, I said, this is it. I bought the course uh, two months later and here I am. Wow. Um, your second question was about my systems. Is that what you're? Uh, well, how, you know, how do you work it when you're on the road and you're traveling or skiing or surfing? You know, you're, you're living this adventurous lifestyle. Like at some point you have to stop and send out offers and deal with yep. customers or, you know, something like that. Yeah. So, uh, I do not send out offers personally. I don't, I don't do any mailings myself. I use, uh, different services like click the mail or letter stream. Um, and I just send out big batches, 500 to a thousand at all at once. Um, and my response rate has been typically pretty good, anywhere between three and five percent if I offer too much. Um, but after that, it just feeds right into uh, Podio, and then from Podio, I've built a whole bunch of uh, Zaps. My favorite, just like you, uh, I've always said, Zapier is your one of your favorite uh, one of your favorite apps, and I geek out on that stuff. I've built so many different custom, uh, API connections that, uh, most of it, I mean, I can manage the whole business in maybe an hour a day, maybe two at most. Um, and as long as I have an internet connection, uh, I'm able to, to pull it off. Um, one of the harder things that I've encountered so far is notary services. Cause I was up in Canada. Um, and I said, what do I do up here? And there are notaries, but they're like, I don't know, state required notaries or something. It was a tremendous amount of money. It was like 150, 200 bucks. Um, and I had to drive all the way to Calgary from, from uh, Banff. So that's been my only issue so far running this business from the road. So Why and even that could be over limited power of attorney to, to do your, you know, yeah. in the States. And yeah. then they can do your, your notary uh, and, and sign your deeds for you. That's a good point. Yeah. So um, sorry, when, when you first started, so t tell us a little bit about um, what it was like going through the toolkit, boot camp, and then taking action and, and going through it. What were some of the highs over some of the lows? Some of the, lot, some of the highs um, were getting that. I mean, I think I got... I didn't get any responses back for the first four weeks probably. And I was freaking out. I was worried. I was like, did I offer too low? But then I settled down. I said, just wait, be patient, calm, meditate. And one came and I ended up not even buying the property, even though it was a accepted offer. I ended up not buying the property, but then they just started overwhelmingly just pouring in over the next like three months. Um, but uh, I would say some takeaways were, like you always say, do not stop your mailing and marketing. Um, because I would occasionally stop marketing. And then I have a, I still have some properties, honestly, from, I don't even know, six months ago that I purchased them. Um, just sitting there. Um, 
I I very much like the the acquisition side of the business, the geeky part, the the systems and processes of it, and I have not systemized the the marketing side of it that well. I just purchased uh, Scott Todd's Posting Domination uh, right after last boot camp and set up my Craigslist ads. Um, but the next thing is Facebook after that. Um, but also another big takeaway was looking back, hindsight's always twenty twenty. I definitely should have bought coaching. Um, I remember thinking, ah, it's too expensive. It would have been my, my whole investment right up front going to coaching. I wouldn't have any money, but looking back, I ended up blowing all of my cash on deals, buying, buying properties. And, uh, this past Christmas I had no money in the bank because I sold a few, but, um, some, most of them were on terms. So I wasn't getting that, uh, getting my cost basis back. So, um, yeah, I definitely would have bought coaching <laughs> in hindsight. Yeah. So. I mean, you know, Scott, and I talk about it that all the time, just the sense that, you know, people pay either way, right? Yep. You're either pay yep. with your time and mistakes, or you're just going to, you know, help us take you up that mountain and be your Sherpa and, and get it done uh, quickly and efficiently and hopefully get your money back quickly and efficiently as well. Uh, Scott, but what, what's your, uh, your thoughts as far as, you know, the way Nat runs his business and in the lifestyle. I I like it, you know, like, um, Mark, I haven't had a chance to talk to you, but you know, like, uh, I've gotten, I've got, I've been watching these, uh, YouTube videos on these guys that are, that are, uh, they're called overlanders. Have you heard about these guys? I've never heard the term overlander. Uh, You know overlander? Yep. Okay, Mark, like, I got to tell you something, man, like this, I, I'm amazed by this. So, So these guys, they, they head out on these trails. There's like backwood trails throughout the whole country. Like there's a trail called the, I, I never heard of this before. I've lived there my entire life. The Trans America Trail. It runs from the East Coast to the West Coast. Okay. Like, and it's like an, it's on road and off road trail. Okay. And you, you kind of need a four wheel drive car to go through this thing, but you're camping under the stars. You're camping out in these beautiful remote areas. And, uh, you know, I'm not much of a camper either, but I've been like watching these videos and I'm thinking like, holy cow, man, life on the open road. Like, what are you stressing out about? Right. There's nothing to stress out about that like that. And the fact that you can have a business that provides you with income, no matter where you are in this country or really around the globe. Uh, I think it's a, I think it's a great thing. It's amazing. I, you know, but it, it takes, I think, so much courage. And I think it takes um, uh, also a, a certain amount of, um, you know, grit as far as taking, taking that, that should, you know, cultural sort of, you know, voice out of your head. So like there's times, you know, I, I take Mondays and Fridays off and um, sometimes it'll creep up to, you know, say I should be doing this. Right. Scott, do you ever have that, like that little shit uh, voice? Yeah. I mean, I took, I took uh, last Friday off. I took yesterday off Monday. Yesterday was Monday. I took those two days off and like all day long yesterday, I had this guilty feeling like, Oh, I feel like there's something I should be doing. Mark, for the first time, I got to tell you something, for the first time on Sunday, I had the, I was dreading Monday and I don't know why I couldn't tell Ooh. you why, but I was determined that I was going to take the day off. Like, I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to focus only on what I need to focus on yesterday. But I had a guilt feeling and I was feeling guilty about it. And then at the end of the day, I actually like felt better today. I feel much better, but I'm like, why is that? Why did I feel guilty that I was taking a day off? Well, Nat, tell, tell us, like, do you ever have those, those thoughts and you know, yeah. wh- how, how do you handle it? Um, I'll be honest. I've always been that, that efficiency productivity guy and getting stuff done. Like if I'm not moving forward, I'm dying. And I kind of had to break myself of that. I've, uh, even when I was on the road in LA, I listened to your interview the very first time I was like, I should be working or I should be starting a business. What's wrong with me? But, um, yeah, I still struggle with that to this day. I still feel guilty. Um, so I, one thing that's helped me tremendously is I have those feelings come up when I don't, when I'm not doing anything. It may not be that I'm not productive, but just simply not doing something. So one way I've, I've 
gotten around this or figured it out is always scheduling some activity. Uh, it may be simply just re reading a book, but always taking my time, my free time and scheduling it with something. Inevitably work ends up filling the void if it's not scheduled in. All right. So, so walk, walk us through like what you're doing this week. Uh, this week is pretty laid back. I'm in my buddy's uh, five bedroom, 5,000 square foot house on five acres in Bedford, New Hampshire. Um, so today's the podcast interview. I got a few uh, deals that I'm going to acquire uh, to wrap up later today. But after that, I have uh, some friends coming into town. We're cooking a big steak dinner. And then after that, it's going to be uh, up to Acadia National Park up in Maine and just go up there for the weekend, shut off the cell phone, and just enjoy it. Enjoy nature. So do not look at the internet. Don't even turn it on. So um, I find myself needing more and more of that because uh, I'm always connected. Yeah, it was, it was funny. I remember uh, you know talking to you and you were on a ski trip. You're skiing and you, you stopped on the mountain and we did, a, <laughs> and we did a Zoom call. It was beautiful. Yeah. And, uh, but you're still like, you know, you were still connected even though you're skiing, which, you know, I don't know anyone that today isn't connected. Um, yeah. Unless they're like, you know, a monk or something. Uh, it's, it's, I think it's the problem of our time is distraction. Um, Scott Todd, if, uh, if Cole came to you and said, Dad, I want to be Nat Bruno and I want to just live life on my own terms. I want to see the world. I want to live in nature. I want to go on adventures. What would you say? Well, it would be hard. Like it would be hard because, you know, I would want him to do something with, uh, with kind of what I'm doing, however, or, or whatever he wants to do. However, as long as he was self-sufficient, right? Like how, how, like, to, to me, you know, you can, you can define rich any way you want, but Nat, Nat is def living a, a rich life, right? Like it's not one that's necessarily uh, like, I don't know the money situation coming in, but I would tell you that it's not necessarily about the money coming in. It's about the experiences that you're creating. Yeah. I mean, he's, he is the definition of rich because if you look at rich as being able to do what you want, when you want with whom you want, Right that's pure success. I know a lot of people who are overwhelmed with money, but they have no time. They're on planes. They're stressed out, right? They don't know their family because they're always working, right? Then I know other people that have the other, they're on the other opposite of the end of the coin. They got tons of time because, you know, they don't have any money, right? I mean, now they've stressed with they don't have any money, but they, they have time because they're not working. And because they're not working for a variety of reasons, you know, they're stressed out that they don't, they're not able to, you know, go on vacation with their family or do things that Nat's able to do. So Nat's sort of taken this nomadic Tim Ferriss idea of the four hour work week and blown it up. So Nat, the question is, what do mom and dad think? <laughs> so mom and dad thought I was homeless for a long time and they, they were supportive, but they didn't understand it. Um, and I had to explain to him, I'm not, I'm not, homeless I'm houseless and I choose to be like this so this is a lifestyle choice and as a result like you said I'm able to do whatever I want whenever I want with whomever I want and I'm rich in lifestyle but maybe not so much money but I can do anything so they've come around to the idea and I've actually sent them on a, uh, a RV trip last year to the southwest and they came back and they were pumped up for a good two months afterward. I'm trying to get him on another one up to uh, Banff, Canada this summer. Does your passive income in land investing exceed your fixed expenses? Uh, yes, but just barely. Uh, it's only like a couple hundred. But uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm free basically. It's just only going to grow as well. So Scott, that's wealth. <laughs> like, what, what's your passive income exceeds your fixed expenses? You're totally free. It doesn't matter if it's a dollar more or, or, or a million dollars more, does it? I mean, I guess you want to have a, a cushion there, but yeah. I, 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 think, I think if my kid said, hey, I want to be like Nat Bruno, I, I would be like, great. 
I want to be like Matt Bruno too. Uh, I, I think, I don't know, Nat, how did you come up with this? Like this, <laughs> the, I mean, you know, it's, it just goes against sort of the cultural norm of get a good job, work really, really hard, get an ulcer, right? Go on two weeks vacation. And then, um, you know, maybe in your, 30s maybe you'll figure out oh maybe i want to start a business right average what's you know what's the joke about an entrepreneur right they're on they're unemployed they're working really hard 80 hours a week they're not they, they're just unemployed like they're not getting any traction right then they go and and uh whatever but like how how did you sort of crack this code if you will and and then execute on it uh, that's a, that's a big question. Um, I've always been of the contrarian mindset. So whatever everybody else is doing, I'm probably doing the opposite. So if everybody's, uh, for example, in business, everybody's advertising yellow pages, I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to go with word of mouth or I'm going to advertise online. Or if everybody is buying a house and getting married, I'm going to say, why I'm going to question it. I'm going to say, why can't you live on the road or have a family while uh, jumping from Airbnb to Airbnb? Um, I think that ultimately is what's driving many of my decisions. And, they, and they, it's been driving my decisions for a number of years. And I, like I said, I've always found success in doing it. I love it. I love it. What are you, I mean, are your friends like, I can't even look at you, Nat. I'm so jealous. <laughs> yeah. I have multiple friends that are millionaires and they're, they always tell me they're so envious of me and my lifestyle. And I say, what's the power or what's the point of having a million dollars or multi-million dollars if you can't, if you don't have freedom, if you can't do what you want, you know? So yeah, I have, I have many friends <laughs> that say that constantly. So what would be your advice to somebody that wants to become you? How, would, how can they sort of emulate what you've done and, and execute on it? Um, I would say one of the very first steps is chopping down your monthly recurring expenses, stuff that's going to cost money every single month. Um, do you need to have that car payment? Do you need that Spotify subscription? Do you need Amazon Prime? Um, do you need to be making that huge insurance payment on your car? Uh, just question every single expense. Um, and I'd also take a look also at where are you spending your money? Because once you have that, that money freedom and you're not bound to making a tremendous amount, that's where freedom truly comes into play. I love it. Scott, I'm canceling my, uh, my Amazon prime subscription right now. <laughs> no, no, you're not. No, I'm you're not. not, you know, I'm not, I'm really not because <laughs> they got two day deliver or two hour delivery, <laughs> but it's, uh, it, it, it is, it is something that, um, I like to do every, you know, quarterly is look at the expenses and then talk to my wife and fight with her for about an hour or two. Do we really need that? Do we really need this? And then, but not ultimately I lose the fight, but <laughs> it's still fun to do it. Scott, yeah. do you, do your wife have that issue or are you guys pretty much aligned? Uh, we're just aligned. Just look, Mark, you just said it, right? Like, look, how many times have you ever watched home and garden TV? You know, like that, there's the one like house hunters or whatever. And you know, the, the husband's sitting there, he's like, in my house, I want whatever. And then the wife's like, well, I want like a, you know, I want a big backyard. The husband doesn't want the big backyard because of the mowing. The wife's like, I want the big backyard and whatever. And then the husband sees the house with the big backyard. He's like, I hate this house. You know, it's got the big backyard and they play into that. And at the end, I can always tell my wife, like, they're getting the big backyard. Why? Because the wife always wins. Why argue with her? Happy wife, happy life. So why argue with her, Mark? Yeah. So Let her be. Matt, I mean, you, you, are you single? Or are you married? Are you dating? I'm cur Yeah, no, I'm single and I'm dating. You're single and you're dating. So how, how is that going? Like, 
Um, what is the typical female reaction to your lifestyle? Uh, it's either, it's pretty much one of the extremes. It's either, oh my God, that's horrible. Don't talk to him anymore. Or it's the complete opposite of, oh my God, that's awesome. Tell me more. And there you, there you go. I mean, it's a great uh, pre-qualification, excuse me, uh, for women. If they're interested, you know, you got, you might have a, a winner on your hands. So, so Mark, like we talked about our sons, our sons want to be, be Nat and we're like, "Uh, okay, your daughter, your daughter, like says, honey, uh, dad, I want to introduce you to my boyfriend. You're like, okay, well, what does he do? Well, he's Nat. Like, how are you, how are you dealing with that? Mark? All right. Father-in-law Mark. Father-in-law Mark. All right. I couldn't do it. I, I, I think. You know, uh, all right. Let's say Hope comes home with Nat. All right. Right. Yeah. And she yeah. says, Dad, I'm really happy and I'm going to go yeah. travel the world. I, th- I think as long as she was self sufficient and doing something productive to make the world a better place, and we can make the argument Nat is not, not doing anything, right? He's making the world a better place, right? He's helping people in a variety of ways. I, I think you'd be happy. I honestly do. I don't think that you would, you would say, hey, no, go get the, 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 the four-bedroom house and the white picket fence and the two dogs and, and, and be tied down to one place if she could go and see the world and be happy. Because ultimately, I think we want our children to be happy. Okay, but, but then, like, you know, I the think grandkids you would, I think you'd come. haze her, but I, don't, I think ultimately you would be happy. Yeah, I'd be like, uh, where, how you pay, how you paying for gas this week? Just kidding. <laughs> um, I, I, mean, I, I think I think there would be some anxiety uh, because there would be. But I I think there I have anxiety anyways. I would be worrying regardless, right? I would be. I would be worrying either way. I'd be worrying if she was a, a corporate attorney at a big law firm working 80 hours a week and stressed out all the time. And I'd be worried if she was traveling the world and living the life of her dreams and I would still have a worry. So either way, I'm not getting rid of the worry because they're my children and that's my job as a parent. I, I just, I'm just going to be worried. I'd rather than be happy. I will tell you that my wife and I, we were, uh, we were, we, we were talking about career paths for my daughter, <laughs> the two of us alone. Right. Like, uh, and, and we were saying like, Oh, she would, she'd be really good at this. Right. And then my wife's like, I heard that was very stressful. And so she's looking up, she's like, Oh yeah, yeah. This is a very stressful job. Forget it. Right. So like, it's funny that we're sitting here having this conversation about my daughter's like, Hey, she could go do this. Well, no, we don't want her to stress out too much. Just travel the world. Be like that. <laughs> I mean, you know, if it's amazing, it's amazing. I, I, I think, I think the, I think there is something to questioning everything. I really do. And um, Nat, I think you're a, a huge inspiration to a generation of people um, that might be at a crossroads as far as they're, you know, looking at their life and and examining their life and why. Are they doing the things they're doing? You know, it's a good example. I just read Homo Deus. Do you know why we have green lawns, Scott? Do you know why we have, why? We have lawns? No. Because it is a, it, it, this, I think it was like the 16th century. Um, in England, it was a show of wealth, right? It took a tremendous amount of money to water this lawn and maintain this lawn. And you knew if the Duke or the Baron was in trouble by the, by the state of their lawn, right? And it kind of just filtered down without anybody even thinking about it, right? It is now an ostentatious display of affluence that everyone can show is have a lawn, right? There's no other reason to have it, right? It's, it's just a waste of resources if you really want to think about it, right? <laughs> So it is, yes, it is. And, and it's stressful too because you get it nice and green, and then all of a sudden, uh, uh, this th- I'm having this happen right now. This stupid worm is eating my grass, and I'm like on the phone today to, with the lawn care company. I got this worm eating the grass. Right, but how many how many things do we do in our lives subconsciously that are really just a cultural 
sort of phenomenon that we don't even think about. It is really just a display of wealth. The big house, right, is a display of wealth. The big car is a display of wealth. Um, all the toys that you, that you enjoy, that, that you get sick of, are really like kind of, yeah. I mean, so the simplicity of living and experiencing things, and there's happiness after happiness study that will reinforce this, right? The hedonic treadmill does not make us happy. Buying things gives us a temporary jolt but then we're not happy after that. We have to get something else, right? But what really truly makes us happy are the quality of our relationships and the freedom and control to do what we want. So Nat Bruno, are you happy? Very. I am stress-free. I've not woken up to an alarm clock in probably three years now. Um, I do what I want. I travel where I want and Next, next thing on the agenda is going to be international travel. So working out a few more kinks and then December, January, I'm heading to Australia and New Zealand. Well, so yes, I'm very happy. You know, I think I speak for everybody that, you know, we, we just can't stand you. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. It's great. All right. So now we're at that point in the podcast now where we're going to ask you for your tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable, where there aren't a passive income listeners can go right now, improve their businesses, improve their lives. What have you got? So I always recommend to people to try something before you buy it. So dip your toe in the water, try, uh, try the van life for a weekend. So um, I always recommend people check out rvshare.com, which is just like our Airbnb, except it's for vans and RVs. So you could rent a van for just a weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, instead of committing to it for a week, a month, or just straight up buying it and then saying, what are we going to do with this? rvshare.com. I love it. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. All right, Scott Todd, what's your tip of the week? All right, Mark. Well, I, I just change it up because of the feel of today's uh, show. I, I just want to encourage everybody, check out Overlanding. Just Google Overlanding. Go to, go to YouTube. Check out Overlanding. Like in the search, type in Overlanding Jason. The guy's Jason. He's my favorite Overlander so far. Uh, I, I, I love this guy. I can't tell you why. Uh, he's based in Florida. Maybe that's part of it. I don't know, but, uh, it, it, it just kind of gives you a peek. If you're not, if you don't even know what overlanding is, it just gives you a peek, a peek into this whole world that's, that's out there that you don't even realize. I mean, in one of this guy, Jason's, uh, vlogs, he, he shows like him going up this, this, uh, mountain in his car and he's got his kids with a mark and he pulls out his drone and they set up camp, I'm sorry, they set up camp and then he pulls out his drone and he takes off and it leaves behind him. And he's like, here's my camp. And literally there's nothing else around him at all. And just, he's just in the middle of the mountains. That's so cool. Well, my tip of the week is learn more about Nat Bruno at hashtag vanlife.com. Hashtag vanlife.com. Um, Nat, is that, is that the best place to go? Yep. And it's, uh, you got to spell out the hashtag. Yeah, you got to spell out the hashtag. And I'll, I'll have a link to it. But um, it's really cool. And it's, and it's really a, a neat, you know, place to go and, and learn more about, you know, how, how to do this, right? Um, yeah. And it's, it's really cool. It's really cool. Uh, and I'm so, I'm just so proud to, to be able to have helped you on this journey um, with, you know, providing what I consider, you know, and Scott considers the best passive income model where you can do these adventures and still provide and still have that passive income coming in on an automated basis every single month to fund your, your adventures. So Scott, uh, are we just going to keep living vicariously through Nat or are we going to, are we going to like, you know, dig deep and, and try to like, like, let's just take a month and live like Nat. I, I don't know. We'll have to see, man. We'll have to see. <laughs> All right. Even just a week. I, I, I might just try RV, RV share, man. My wife was just saying like, it'd be great to get an RV. I should try RV share and uh, just go somewhere. What the heck? Yeah. It's not, it's not a bad idea. It'd be fun. 
I, yeah, absolutely. I, I, mean, I want to take the kids camping more. Do you guys go camping a lot? Well, Scott, you're, you're on oh, mute. Sorry, sorry. My, I'm not a big camper. My, um, I've taken my son camping like once. Okay. Um, it wasn't necessarily the best experience for, I, it was okay, right? Like, but I always, I always dream about like taking the boat out and going to this beach that like an island or something that I can only get to on boat, throwing up one of those pop tents, just camping out a day or two right there on the water. You know, like I, I, I have this like uh, adventurous like thought process, like this is what I would go do. I've never done it. I might, I still might go do it, but um, with, with, the, with the uncovering of overlanding, I might have to get out there. All right, well, I'm, I'm going to start looking into it. I might just have Uncle Nat take my kids out and be like, look, <laughs> this, this is what you guys can do. This, you know, everything mom and dad have told you, ask why and do this. I'm telling you, Mark, try it. Uh, all my friends' kids, my cousin's kids, everybody loves the van life. I am the cool uncle, very much so. Yeah, so. yeah. You, I mean, you, 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 I mean, I have to experience it. I really do. Um, there's, there's, I don't know. It's, it's amazing. I'm just very, very happy that, that I, you know, you came on the podcast and, uh, you know, we're able to share all this with us. I, I really am. Thank you, Nat Bruno. Um, thank, thank you, Mark. I very much appreciate everything that you've done for, for me and also the, the Blank Geek community. It's, yeah, it's, it's my pleasure. It's, uh, it's my why. It's my purpose. It yeah. gets, gets me up out of, the, out of the bed every day. Um, so I want to just thank all the listeners. If you want to become like Nat Bruno and you want your passive income to exceed your fixed expenses, go to landgeek.com forward slash training, set up a call with uh, David or Mike and learn more about uh, you know, various programs to get you there. Um, and if you're currently land investing and you want to start automating your postings, learn more at postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek, automate your Craigslist postings and your Facebook postings. Uh, Scott Todd, are we good? We're good, Mark. Nat Bruno, are we good? We're good, Mark. Thank you. All right. Well, I want to thank the listeners again. If the only way we're going to get the quality of guests like a Nat Bruno to come on the show is you got to subscribe, you got to rate, and you got to review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of the review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit. I'll let Scott say it now. Ready, Mark? Let I'm, freedom ring. Uh, let freedom <laughs> ring. All right. Thanks, Nat. Thanks, Scott. See you guys.